Hello and welcome to the Neckbeard Experience, episode 20. I've got a lineup of neckbeards today that I hope you enjoy. First we've got Lady Saber and her continued adventures with Sir Sam the Chivalrous. And many more, so I hope you stick with us and enjoy. Here we go. Story number one, Sir Sam phones a friend. Well, on to another adventure with Sir Sam the Chivalrous. Let's introduce the characters. Player 1, me, Lady Saber, 16, foreign exchange student, going through some stress about midterm exams before Christmas break. Also, I'm a very light sleeper. Player number 2, Sir Sam the Chivalrous, all around Beatus beard, smells like putrid pasta sauce because he probably bathes in it. While I have no in-person contact with Sir Sam in this story, I imagine that he wears all of his fedoras at once while using his phone to boost his chivalry level. This story spans most of the exam week, beginning the night of Sam's first fencing tournament and ending the following Thursday. It's Saturday night. I've gotten home from my tournament, showered, had dinner, and gotten into bed. I feel good, finally able to relish in my victory in peace. I fell asleep quickly, around 11 o'clock or so. As mentioned above, I'm a light sleeper. I often wake up at bumps and noises at night, or even loud noises in my dream. Staring around for 15 seconds, I go right back to sleep. Tonight, I woke up to a buzzing on my phone. That was a new text from an unknown number. It's probably spam, so I go back to sleep. Later, more buzzing, same number. I unlock my phone, squint like an Asian in the Caribbean against the brightness, and fumble to the new text. Hi, what's up? Can't sleep. How are you? It's 12.30 a.m. What the heck? I take the bait and I respond. What is it? Seriously? It's like 1 a.m. <laughs> well, hello to you too, Lady Saber. Can't believe you don't know who this is, though. Tell me who this is, or I'm blocking this number. Okay, okay, chill. It's Sam. That's all the answer I need. I switch my phone off and I try to go back to sleep again, before getting back up to respond with... How did you get this number? Oh, well I called my mom this afternoon. I accidentally called myself first. So I had your number on my phone and I decided to text you. Smiley face. Dude. Sam, I have a midterm in world history tomorrow. I need to sleep. That's cool. I'm studying anatomy. Winky face. Why do I even try? I turn my phone off and go back to sleep. Yet, like I was in some well-timed nightmare, my phone goes off again shortly thereafter. I try to ignore it. But it keeps going. He's calling me. I silence the call. I go back to a fitful sleep until I get another call. I pick up, probably sounding like a drunk Smeagol. Hello? Hey, Lady Saber. Sam? Hi, yeah. I'm sorry. I can't sleep. Hey, what a coincidence. Me neither. We must be soulmates or something. Sam, I have a test tomorrow. What do you want? Nothing. Just thought you'd like someone to talk to. Did you get home safe this afternoon? I know someone who won't be very safe going home. Yeah, fine. Sam, I need sleep. I end the call and look at the clock. It's 4.30. Have to be up in like an hour. I don't dare to switch my phone to do not disturb mode or else I'll miss the wake up alarm. The texts come trickling in. I feel like crying or screaming or just laughing hysterically. I can't go back to sleep. So I stare at the ceiling for an hour while my phone buzzes like it's on a cocaine high. I eventually drag myself out of bed and I try in vain to cover the bags under my eyes. I do mediocre on my test, coming very close to dropping a letter grade in class. The next night, the same thing. I have a dozen new texts coming in every few hours. Some are short messages, and some are the beginning of an academic paper. I get a lot of picture messages, random funny memes, and rage comics, as well as pictures of the final score of his Call of Duty matches. They seem to pick up at night too, like he draws energy from gallons of monster, and streaming gigabytes of Sasha Gray and Asa Akira. I am not sleeping a wink. My eating is off. I have manic burst of energy followed by hours of uselessness. 
On Tuesday night, I turned my phone all the way off. I slept through what would have been my alarm. My host family tries to get me out of bed. They don't know about this whole event, so I break down and spill the Cheetos. I end up sleeping a full 12 hours that day, and then another 4 hour nap that afternoon. My host mother buys me an alarm clock so that I can leave my phone off the next night. Because I missed an exam, I have to go in on Friday to do a makeup, pushing the family's vacation back one day. I'm really mad. This continues for 4 days. I think this is because he's never actually had a real milady to text. So he's going to take this opportunity and run with it, like a Tumblr user with a new gender identity. Suddenly, those years of beard, straight white boy, and Beatus all come pouring out in a slurry of carbonated cheesy meat sauce. It is a horrifyingly beautiful slow motion train wreck, which is why it takes me so long to tear myself away. I finally block Sam's number Wednesday afternoon. He figures this out, however, and he starts texting me from a different number. At first, he's apologetic. Probably because he realized he overdid things a wee bit and is trying to backpedal. Knighthood prevails soon enough and he starts to ask me about John. You guys spend a lot of time together. Yeah, we're pretty good friends. Oh, just friends. Yes, Sam. So I see I'm not the only one that fell victim to the friend zone then. <laughs> I have no idea how to respond to this, so I just wait. It doesn't take long. Indeed. Well, I really just think that John only pays attention to you because of how much makeup you wear and the way that you dress. If you really want to find someone that can respect you and treat you like a lady, you should present yourself that way and the right guy will find you. Dress for the relationship I want, right? Okay. Have you had any Orakai proposition you, Sam? Plus, John doesn't really dress like he has any class either. John wears really nice jeans and muscle tees like a normal hot person. Sam speaks from experience, naturally, having as much class as a Marxist utopia. I'm pretty done hearing about how gross I am for trying to make myself look good. So I silence my phone and finally get a full night's nice rest. Sir Sam walks back to his last tirade in a series of pitiful messages that I can't even bring myself to quote for the cringe pain. This Friday, I show up and make up my last exam. I should have known that I couldn't make it out of this week without encountering the obese. But hold on to your nachos, because it's the next story. Story number two, Celebeard and the Chad comes to lunch. Okay, since a bunch of you all wanted more, I'll share a story of what happened today. See? After the whole rustling from last time, I figured that I'd leave Celebeard alone, at least for a couple of days. That way I can plan a better prank and kind of let him chill out. Well, today, that villain invited me over to lunch to her place because he had friends over and he was weird. Also, a minor thing that I want to share, but nothing to do with the story, but after the whole prank, that villain told me that Celebeard apparently added me to his list of mortal enemies. And spot number 16 for ruining my thifter. Yeah, I don't even care. But anyways, without further ado, let's go. Characters. There are the same as last time, plus one new dude. The other kid, or Talk for short. He was the dude that Celebeard was playing cards with the last story. He's skinny, really bad acne on his forehead and cheeks. And I swear he had something on his chin. He's actually a little bit taller than Beardy. Probably 5 foot 8. I don't really know. I'm eyeballing it based on how tall I am. He has no neck beard, but he had a few hairs on his chin that could charitably be called whiskers. Really greasy black hair that was styled in a bowl cut. And remember that guy from looking for an internet girlfriend video? His voice was basically like that, and his fashion sense was crap. He was wearing a bunch of neon bracelets, a blue My Little Pony t-shirt, and a pair of black trip pants. So moving on. Today was a pretty chill day. Most Saturdays should be. Except for when I go outside. Normally, I would want to stay inside and sleep on the couch. But I have cats, which aren't allowed inside because my mom has allergies. So I go outside a lot and feed them and hug them. It's usually an uneventful thing. Except for today. Celebeard is out on his porch with talk. And they see me cuddling a cat. And for some reason, he quietly tells his buddy, He's a Chad that ruined my fifth 
Oh my salty little beard, how wrong you are. Talk's response, however, blew me away. He says, Hey, look, it's a wussy with a cat. While pointing directly at me. Right, that's enough outside for me today. Except, Bat Villain actually hears the second yell and comes out to 1. Pet a floof, and 2. Invite me to lunch for her house. I'll be honest, I was taken by surprise by this invite, since I assumed that we'd be leaving the beard alone today. Um, aren't we leaving Cello Beard alone this weekend? Just come over to my place. That little jerk talk, he has weird things for me. And I need a fake boyfriend to get him to buzz off. Can't you tell your parents to give him the boot? They're out today, and the maid doesn't like to get involved in our social stuff. Just help me out. I've got Sate inside. Sate, say no more. I'm sold. I basically nod a quick yes. Put my cat down, and I follow her into the living room. So, immediately as soon as I walk in, Talk does a full 180, and he acts like he's never seen me. Who's that mysterious fellow? A boyfriend? Sure, let's go with that. Isn't that right? She actually does an exaggerated cheek pinch, much to the chagrin of Beard and Talk. But he's white. What could you possibly find appealing about a mindless thug like that? Okay, wow. You racist midget. He's sweet, nerdy, has similar interests, and hella handsome. Ah, stop you flatterer. Clearly you're not getting it. What does he have that I don't? Honestly, Bat Villain's reply catches me off guard, so I had to stifle a laugh. Well, he stands a few inches taller than most men. Nice, real subtle there, Bat Villain. She grabs my arm and pulls me to the couch. Get your hands off that filthy Chad. Don't worry, Shorty, I'm clean. Just let us eat in peace. We eat in an uncomfortable silence. There's a few angry glances thrown my way. Every so often, I would move a little bit closer, just to make them mad. I decide to feed one of the satay sticks to Bat Villain. This makes Talk and Sella Beard mad to no end. Eventually, Bat Villain has to use the facilities, and that's when Talk and Sella Beard tears into me. Back off. My sister deserves an intellectual. A nice guy. Someone that can treat her like a queen. Right, so you want her to date you. I saw a bunch of comments saying he probably wanted to, so I figured I might throw him off a little. I think I could hear the gears turning in his head. Then he said, No, someone like Thok. Yeah, you broke the world anyway. I had dibs on her. I honestly choked on my food because of how it caught me off guard. You do realize that dibs isn't a thing, right? Whatever. If you're just a chad that stands in between me and Bat Villain, I'll take you out like a knight fighting a dragon. She needs a nice guy. So a nice guy doesn't respect her decisions. Thank you Reddit for arming me with that response I needed. He honestly had no response to this. And thankfully before he can muster one up, Bat Villain comes back in and invites me to her room. Now. Obviously, we're not doing anything shady, but Celebeard and Talk thinks we're up to something. We can sort of see their shadows moving around through the gap under the door, trying to listen in, no doubt. So in a moment of inspired genius, Bat Villain yells, Privacy, please! And puts on a song so they can't hear us. I'm not even laughing at this point. I'm like, silently wheezing because dang, that stuff was funny. Unfortunately, we forgot to lock the door. And this bit is the real kicker. Are you ready? Have you taken your deep breath? Okay, good. Celebeard and Talk actually burst into the room, ready to freak out about Bat Villain being seduced to the dark side by a Chad. And Bat Villain, not wanting to ruin the illusion, decides to kiss me. At least, that's what it looks like. You know that trick they teach you in drama about how to fake a kiss on stage? If you don't, here's how it works. The person who initiates the kiss puts their hand on the cheek that faces away from the audience, then puts their thumb over both of their mouths at an angle that the audience can't see. This makes it look like they're actually kissing, but saves both actors the trouble of doing something like that on stage. They see what they think is a moment of passion, and I really can't describe the noise that Talk made. For those of you that browse our green text, the noise was basically re, and this is my best impression of it. God, I wish I could say I was making this up. Talk as red-faced, or as red-faced as you can get with the tan. And Cella Beard is in shock. That villain seizes the moment to basically tear them a new one for killing the moment. 
Oh my god, do you have any understanding of privacy and personal space? Go back to your rooms, you freaking red pill buttholes. I've made my choice and I'm sticking to it. But, but he's... I don't give a crap what you think he is. He's a real nice guy. He treats me with respect. He doesn't come barging into my room because I leave the door unlocked. But we're trying to protect you. I don't need your protection. Get out. And if you tell mom and dad about this, I'll show them the disgusting crap you keep under your bed. Side note. I asked her what she meant by this. Apparently, Cella Beard, he keeps a lot of lolly comics under his bed. I feel sick. Got it? They both nod and leave. After that, Bat Villain spends like five minutes apologizing for springing that kiss on me like that. And after that, all settled. I decided to go home because I had my fill of euphoria for the day. On the way out, Cella Beard and Talk basically blocked me from using the door. I'm about ready to shove past them until Celebeard hits me with this bomb. You're on thin ice, buddy. Next time you come here, you're dead. He then does the exaggerated knuckle crack thing, which looks super stupid because his fingers are basically Vienna sausages. Story number three, Secondhand Store Beard. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to offer you a story of a neckbeard I encountered while I worked at a secondhand music, DVD, and game store in my local shopping center. Now this neckbeard, he came into the store quite often, like once or twice a month when I first began working. He was a typical example of his species, overweight, with greasy unkempt hair. He wore dark clothing, and if my memory serves me well, he actually had a fedora. He smelled of weed, Doritos, and dirty public toilets. Whenever he visited, he'd always linger around the anime, foreign film section, for a lot longer than most customers would. Occasionally, one of the staff members would ask him if he was looking for a specific item. He would just respond with a non-enthusiastic, Nope! And bugger off shortly after. Once in a blue moon, he'd actually buy something. And this is how my interactions with him occurred. Now, I'm a woman, and I'm heavily into rock, punk, and metal. This immediately caught his eye, especially since I tended to wear Slipknot and Dead Kennedys shirts. One day, he came to my desk on the checkout, purchased some anime DVDs, I couldn't remember which ones, and he noticed my shirt, and he asked me, So, what's your favorite band? And I replied with, Blink-182 and Slipknot? He looked rather dejected at this, saying, Those aren't true bands. I want to show you what real bands are like when you have time. I replied by stating that I clearly didn't have the time, and there was a rather large queue he was holding up. He paid for his DVDs and left. Next week, he comes back, trading in some old PlayStation 2 games that he claimed that he found in his attic. While browsing through the games, I made some offhand comments about them, and the comment I made about Soul Calibur 2 seemed to particularly rile him up, which I said, Oh, I play this with my partner on occasion. He made some comment under his breath. I can't remember the exact wording, but it was something like, He's probably a stupid Chad. I asked him to repeat it, and he looked at me like I pushed Haruhi Sasumiya to the ground and spat in her face. Luckily, at that moment, my boyfriend decided to pop in. The neckbeard storms off, and if he was a cartoon, there would be flames rising from his fat face. He comes by about a fortnight. I'm in the back, and sorting out stock. My coworker tells me that, Hey, the anime guy, at the desk, go sort him out. I reluctantly oblige, and there he is, all his rotund glory. After seeing your pathetic excuse for a boyfriend, I insist that you take my offer about learning about real metal. He dumps a load of CDs from obscure bands on the counter. Oh, I comment. Are these for trade-in? I'll just ring them up now. I'm in a rush, and my pathetic excuse for a boyfriend and I have plans later. I ring them up and start checking for scratches, all the while hearing his horrified protest of, No! Those aren't trade-ins! Eventually, I give up, and I wind up giving them back saying that they were in too poor of a condition to trade in. He came back a couple of times to woo me after that, but eventually management got sick of him, and they told all staff that he was to be removed from the premises if he should come in again. Story number four, the legendary elf beard. Please don't grill me too harshly if I don't know all the proper Warhammer terms. Way back when, when I was knee-high to a hubcap, my dad used to have more free time for hobbies. He used to be a gym rat, play his bass guitar, 
and loved playing Warhammer and Warhammer 40k. He still does. He would go to the local games workshop to either talk about fluff, get new paints, discuss paint jobs, and custom models, and of course, play the game. He never had much time to go to tournaments, being a working man and family man, but he played when he could. Now enter Legendary Elfbeard. He was a pasty skinny dude with long unkempt brown hair and a fledgling neckbeard. He was called Elfbeard because he had an unnatural enthrallment with, you guessed it, elves. Even down to wearing some makeup prosthetic ears and trying to speak elvish, I think. Anyways, my dad was playing Warhammer with some other dudes when Elfbeard decides to grace the commoners. He scoffed. I'll wipe the floor with your pathetic pygmies. They decided to have a game. Elfbeard had a bad time because they were fighting in a jungle environment with tons of terrain to hide in. Elfbeard was visibly angry because I can't believe that my pristine higher beings could ever lose to a filthy group of pygmies. My dad was using hit and run techniques because of the terrain. Elfbeard's trump card was a minotaur champion. Heh, <laughs> I'm gonna kill your dang pygmies. Elfbeard smugly said. My dad simply replied, Not while my pygmies have him within range of their blow darts. My dad rolled. Ten pygmies hit the minotaur. No saving throws. No rolls for wounds. He was dead. Elfbeard was beside himself and he said, What the heck? That's cheating! Those black buttholes shouldn't be able to do that much damage! The game moderator stepped in. Dude, you got hit in direct line of sight from ten units. Your model is super dead. Elfbeard, being a puny little guy, actually told my dad, If you step outside, I'll beat your cheating butt. My dad stands about six foot three, and at the time he weighed 260 pounds, and that was all muscle. Instead of flattening this delusional nerd, my dad told him to pick his minotaur up and said, Look, he's magically alive. Now shut up and play. After some very quiet and intense turns, Elfbeard lost but kept his saltiness mostly to himself. He walked up to my dad afterwards and said, It's not fair. You use really good military strategy. You have a good looking painted army and a rock hard body and a wife. It's just not fair that guys like you can start encroaching on geek hobbies now. My dad didn't say anything, except rolled his eyes in pity. The GM did the same. Elfbeard walked out of the store, and my dad swears that this is true. He waved his hand and started chanting nonsense. Most likely some elvish curse or whatever. If you like this story, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks to the wonderful writers at Reddit, and also my wonderful Patreons, and not to mention all of you. Hope you guys enjoyed. Man, it's been a rough couple of weeks. Plus, for some reason, my tongue did not want to work this week. Well, thank you very much. And until next time, take very good care of yourselves.